Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for showing up. I'm Debbie Schwartz, founder of Road to College and the Paying for College 101 group. And I'm here tonight with Luann Lee um, of your, your college planning coach. Um, and we're going to actually get started kind of quickly because I appreciate everybody. We move the time um, a little bit last minute from 830 to 8. We got some um, comments that, you know, people wanted to be able to watch the VP debate tonight, which you absolutely should if that's, um, you know, what you'd like to do. So we're also going to try and get through everything um, by nine o'clock. The only reason I say that is we're usually very generous with answering a lot of questions, but we're probably gonna, not going to answer as many questions tonight just so Luann can get through her material. But um, we will schedule something else in October, which will be all about answering questions. So um, just wanted to give you that heads up tonight. And um, my other quick housekeeping, this is recorded. We send a, um, a link tomorrow in a email. Um, most of you are all, well, you all did come in muted. Um, you know, feel free to put questions in the chat. And a last, a last personal request, just a little thing, is if anybody wants to put their video on, it's always nice to see people's faces. So um, with that, I am going to get started and let Luann um, take over. And we've been we've been doing this now, I think this is like the fourth or fifth year, Luann. Um, and uh, um, she's a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, Debbie, I, I think it's actually the fifth year yeah. uh, and um, they usually go like two hours and I have no voice at the end. So this this will be pretty cool. <laughs> and actually, usually tonight is, an, is a FAFSA walkthrough, yep. but as we all know, that's been delayed. And um, so we pushed up our CSS profile one, which we usually do um, a little bit later, but Correct. here we are. Yep. And, you know, it did open a few days early because uh, the CSS wasn't supposed to open until October 1st. I did notice that. I noticed that the CSS, yeah, the CSS yep. profile so opened like a week early. Get all the, all the slides prepared yesterday. Uh, so um, I'll go ahead and get started. And so for those of you that are going to be doing your CSS profile for the very first time, you're in for such a treat. <laughs> Not really. Um, it's, uh, you know, it, it, I, I consider this like a financial colonoscopy, but Debbie and I have been doing this for a long time. And, uh, you know, I've found that I'm, I'm going into my 20th year of college planning. And I have found that the CSS profile is the form that if you're if they're going to be able to give you some institutional aid, um, it's it's going to come from this form for the most part. So, um, you know, a lot of it's it is very financially intrusive, but it's worth doing. I just received a just a wonderful message from a gentleman that I a dad that I I helped um, last year with his CSS profile, the special circumstances, and then um, and helped him write an appeal. And he left me a, a message. He said, you know, I never let you know um, that appeal got us uh, an additional $7,500 per year in additional aid. So he said, as much as I didn't want to do this because it's so intrusive, I'm glad that you talked me into it. So that was really great. So we're gonna go through this fairly quickly so um, you can get off of here and, and go watch the debate. Um, as Debbie said, it's gonna be recorded so you can go back in and, and you know look through the slides and, and such and fast forward through things. But um, so when you first register for the CSS profile, you're gonna to go to the college aid, I'm sorry, uh, the college board um, site, click on CSS profile, and you're going to find there's two dates, just like with the FAFSA. Make sure that you sign in on the correct 2025-26 school year. You have no idea how many people make that error every single year. 
And I'm just going to tell you, there is a wealth of information on the College Board site regarding the CSS profile. I've, I've put some links up at the top of the slides, um, but you can just go to collegeboard.org and fool around with the site. And um, you know, you'll see that there's tutorials and videos and um, text. And so it's um, there's a lot of information there. It's just people don't take the time to uh, you know to look through it. It this is a very financially um, uh, detailed site. Uh, so um, it does behoove you to take your time to go through it. Now you'll see this uh, participating institutions. So um, again, here's you know there's all kinds of of resources there to help you, uh, but um, the one thing this number four, the biggest source of confusion for parents is creating their own account using the student's information. So if you are a divorced family that uh, there will be a custodial parent and a non-custodial parent um, form that needs to be created, the non-custodial parent is going to go in and create their own uh, College Board account that they will then link to their students' account. Um, we'll, we'll be discussing this a bit later, but I just wanted to have two places to talk about this. Um, your exes are not going to see each other's accounts. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that as long as your student doesn't give the other parent their login information. So tell them, you know, this is private uh, just with us because that's the biggest concern for, for most families. I don't want my ex to know my financial information. So um, there's, uh, you, you'll, you've probably heard about the IDOC, uh, which is a documentation service that the College Board uh, provides for many of the colleges, not all of them. And it's where uh, you will upload your tax returns and any documents that they're going to ask you, like, um, um, you know, how many uh, verifying, how many are in the family or W-2s or whatnot. So um, you'll see here in a second when we go to the participating colleges, some colleges use the IDOC and some do not. If you're using the CSS profile to a school that does not use the IDOC, really stress to your student to watch their email inbox for either an invitation to the College Board to register for IDOC or their student portal for the colleges that they're applying to because those schools that don't use the IDOC will probably have an upload link in that student portal for the student to upload the taxes or W-2s or such. So really stress to them to pay attention and you as parents stay on top of them uh, because you know if you don't get some of these things in during um, for the deadlines, you could be missing out on um, aid that we nobody wants to leave behind. Luann, sorry, can you just go back to the account page um, and maybe explain it again? People um, are still confused about um, for like a, you know, a, a married um, couple. Um, how does the parent create an account? Okay, so I'm just trying to, I'm not a Google. Oh, you don't have to, then you don't have to go back. Maybe just explain it. Okay. So it's, it's really simple. Um, when you, the parent who is the custodial parent, you're going to create, um, input the data into the, um, into the CSS. And you're going to, we're going to get to a slide that's going to show, you know, we have to input all of the parents, biological, adopted. But how do they even start the CSS profile? I'm just like, you know, like. Oh, um... you go to the collegeboard.org site and 
it will, right on the front page, it says CSS profile. You click on that and it, there's going to be a um, login screen. Your logging, <clears throat> if you are the custodial parent, you are logging in to your student's College Board account. Would there okay, be... I think that was the confusion. Okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so it's their username and password. Some parents do not want their students to see their financial information. They can create their own College Board account with their name, their username and password of the parent and connect it with the student's information. The non-custodial parent, if you can see here on this screen, there are American University. Yes, they require the non-custodial parent to create a, a profile. You're going to submit that non-custodial parent's email address when it's asked, they're going to get an invitation from the college board to create their own account that they will then give their students information and that's how it will all link. Most of the time parents are not, the custodial parent is not creating a separate account. They're gonna sit down with their student side by side, or they're going to do this without the student, um, but they're just gonna log in as in, into the student's account. I know it's kind of clear as mud, um, but all of the resources or the explanations on how to do that is um, also in the, um, uh, the uh, college board's resources as well. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So if you see here, some schools, they do not require US domestic student to do a profile like Adrian College, but they do require an international student to, to create it. But then um, a American university requires a domestic US student, but they do not require an international student, but they do require CSS non-custodial, they don't use the IDOC, but Amherst College uses the IDOC. So you see, they're all different. So there's 200 or so schools that use the CSS profile. So when you go to, and I've got the, the, um, the link up at the top, just go to collegeboard.org, and you'll see where um, it has participating institutions. You can click on that. You can just do a Google search. CSS profile schools for 2526, and it brings you right to it. So whatever way you want to go through the list and, and see is are the schools that's on your students list, are they on this list or not? And what are the requirements? I am going to put another disclosure because of FAFSA from last year and now this year has been delayed again. Some schools that normally would not be using the CSS profile are going to use um, use it this year. So I've been, for my private clients, I've just been checking with the schools to make sure is it going to use the profile or or not just as a, a backup. So um, I encourage everyone to do the same. One last login account question. For married uh, parents, um, this is the question here to clarify, do they need to have just one parent have an account or both parents, even married, need to have um, um, an account? If they're going to no, it's just one. Yep. Uh, right. I just wanted to make yeah. it clear for people. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I opened up that can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is like starting off. This is the confusion. Yes. Yeah. So um, before you go uh, any further, 
what you want to do once you know which schools, how many schools that you're going to um, be uh, using the profile for. It could be one school. It could be, you know, 16. It just depends on your student's list. So then you want to gather up all of your financial documents. Now you're you're applying for the 25-26 school year. So it's still prior prior tax return. So you're going to be using the 2023 federal tax 1040. Um, with the schedules, the W-2s, 1099s all income related documents, personal and business taxes. Um, your assets are current as of the day or you know typically the week that you're going to be completing the CSS profile. So I like to either get a statement or take a screenshot uh, and save it uh, of you know the the balances. Um, and don't estimate. They they want an accurate uh, an accurate balance. Same thing with the FAFSA. Um, the reason I say take the screenshots or have a statement, uh, it's not that you're going to have to upload them. I've never had to have anybody upload any of their their asset information. But we did find out last year with the FAFSA. Um, when you went in to make any corrections, if you were part of that group um, that were having so many challenges, you didn't see any of the information that you had input. So if you didn't make a note or make a copy or such, you're kind of guessing. So don't don't leave anything to guess. Um, just keep you know really good um, um, uh, notes and or screenshots or such, but any financial information, your brokerage accounts, um, annuities, 529s, a 529 is a regular 529. It's also a prepaid tuition account. You contact the administrator of the account and ask them, what's the current balance um, of my account? You have to calculate how much do I have in savings bonds? Um, real estate investments, uh, if there are any trusts, those are uh, all in the investment um, uh, realm. Your retirement accounts, your 401ks, pensions, annuities that are qualified, IRAs, Roth, they're not going to assess this um, section, but they do ask, they want to see how robust is your savings? How far away are you from retirement? Are you going to be able to afford to keep your child at our school? All of these things are really giving them a lot of information that helps to identify how much money do we have to um, uh, offer. They've got all these algorithms that calculate, you know, how much uh, would a, a family would this kind of assets and income uh, to um, what would it take for them to ex have their student accepted our school? Um, your mortgage statement, uh, whether if you've got a balance on a home equity line of credit or a equity loan, if you don't have a balance on that HELOC, if it's just an open line of credit, there's nothing there. You could have the ability to uh, borrow 150000 if you needed it, but you have no balance, so you don't have 150000 of a loan on that in addition to your mortgage, if that um, makes sense. Excuse People me. are always questioning that. For, for the IRAs and retirement accounts, do you want year-end December of 23, or do you want year-to-date today? Year-to-date. So what is the balance of your assets as of uh, October 1st. So the day that we file, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. okay. So, um, so once you've gathered up all, 
all of your information, all of your financial information, you know what schools, you're going to log in to your student's college board account. And you know they've got a username and password uh, and you're going to start this application. Now, mine says continue because I was in and out. Um, so uh, it was already in progress. So we're gonna go ahead and you'll be starting. Um, again, there's a ton of you know, resources if you've got questions or, or such, videos and, and whatnot. The most important thing to remember about the CSS profile is always look up in the left-hand corner of the screen to see what section you're in. Is it a parent section? Is it a student section? There are 16 different sections in this application. Um, and so just you see where it's required means you've got to have something in there. Um, make sure you spell your kids' names correctly and their given name, not their nicknames. I've seen, you know, a multitude of of mistakes over the years, um, and uh, you know it's because we're we're doing something we've never done before, and most of the time we're rushing. So uh, just kind of take your time through it. You'll see pretty much on every screen, there's going to be these yellowish uh, blocks with a drop down. That means that it's going to open and it's going to say, give you all the information that you need um, to what they're asking um, for. So, like for this one, you know, what if I'm not sure what type, if I'm a citizen or a non citizen or whatever the case is. So it's a painful application to do, but I do appreciate that they talk, they walk you through step by step. Um, so all of these little black lines are not going to show up on your screens is because I'm, um, you know, I had to log into a client's um, account to create this. So uh, just uh, protecting um, that information there. And um, you're wondering, well, why are they asking if my student is active duty or they have their own children? And just remember there's adults that are, are creating this and some of our students are married and have dependents as well. Um, there's always a question uh, for you know students that are they, um, would they qualify as a ward of the court or were they in foster care and what does that mean? And again, um, it's just going to walk you through uh, every step. So in, in this case, um, say a grandparent is a legal guardian um, and that they were not considered a ward of the court. And so it's, um, Anytime you have any questions about that, you can always uh, go ahead and give more information at the end um, in the special circumstances explanation, uh, which will, uh, I think is the most important piece of this application. You can explain things, whether your income had changed, um, whether there was, you know, your uh, questioning as far as guardianship or should I have my information on there as the grandparent or whatever the case is um, uh, that you can't do when you're completing the FAFSA. So yes, they're going to ask for social security numbers for, uh, for the student as well as for the parents and it just helps to sync everything um, correctly. It's going to give you an opportunity to have your college board financial aid ID. Well, when you're first creating this, you're not going to have an ID yet. Um, but if you are, um, in, in this case, we've got a student going into their sophomore year of college, they're going to have their ID from last year. Now, this whole section that we're, we've been talking about is the demographics of the student account you actually have to 
finish this in completion. Um, you can't take a break or close out of it or such. If you try to log back in, the information that you had um, provided is not, uh, typically is not there. Um, so you want to at least complete this student demographics in entirety. And then if you have to take a break or get more documents or you got to go pick up a kid from uh, the bus stop or such, you can log out and log back in and that information will still be there. And they are going to ask you twice, are you sure that your information is correct? Um, because typically you can't, um, once you've submitted your uh, CSS, although they did say that you could go in and make one change, I believe it was last year, um, an opportunity to make changes. Um, uh, typically, you can't go in and make any changes like um, uh, very easily. You have to contact uh, customer service and, and go through quite a bit of uh, rigmarole to do that. So now we're in the, the section of parental relationships. And, and so, so, yes, you have to include all parents. If there is has been a divorce and now we've got two sets of step parents, um, you've remarried and your ex has remarried, now there's going to be four parents um, of that will be uh, considered to uh, be on this application. So, uh, and it doesn't matter if they're not going to um, participate in any kind of financial help. So we're going to start off with parent number one. Once you hit that continue, it, you see all this red letters and think, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? Nothing. They just want you to click on that. Tell us more. So now you're going to give all the information about whoever is going to be parent one doesn't matter which parent it's going to be, mom or dad, um, or there may only be one parent. But if there's two, what you want to do, try to keep it consistent. Parent one is going to be, you know, either mom or dad on the CSS, and they're going to be parent one on the, the FAFSA as well. Just kind of keep it consistent. But um, so we'll go through, they're asking, you know, are they mom, dad, step parent, legal guardian? Or are they deceased? And that's you know biological mom or dad. Um, and then if there is more than one parent, tell us more. Click it again. If there are step parents, once you've completed, you're going to start adding those as well. So now we go to education information, current, and um, so. What is the student's grade level for the 24-25 academic year? Um, and a lot of parents make a mistake here because they think, well, my kid is doing dual enrollment classes. They go to the community college um, while they're still in high school. I'm going to say that they're in their first year of college, and that's incorrect. So as long as they're in high school taking the dual enrollment and or APs, they're still considered a um, high school student. Now, in this case, this student is in college. Um, and so they're going to put, you know, whatever school that they're in, the college that they are currently um, attending. When we get to the point now where we're going to start adding um, the colleges, you've got several ways of finding the CSS code number. Uh, and so you either already know it because you looked it up on the, the school's website, or you're going to say, well, I'm gonna, uh, I don't know what the number is. Let me look up the college name or the state and you'll get a list of all the colleges in that state. So the thing is you've got to be correct with this. and. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll use Duke as an example. Duke University has got five different CSS codes. You can be going through this very quickly and choose the wrong code. 
So uh, again, just take your time and <clears throat> um, you'll indicate in this case, um, do uh, for this particular student, they have a assigned Duke ID. Um, so oftentimes your students have already submitted their applications way before they've um, you're completing the CSS. So they've already been assigned a ID for that school. So definitely put that in here so that everything's going to easily stink up. What's their housing plans? Well, if they're freshmen, they're pretty much going to be on campus. But if they're now a, a freshman this year, they just went back to school last month, and you're filling out the CSS for their sophomore or junior year, um, you don't know yet if they're going to go off campus or if they're going to stay. Well, I'll give you a little tip. This is the time when a lot of students are signing their leases for off-campus apartments for next year for 25-26. So if you've got a returning student uh, at college, uh, you know, put a bug in their ear to find out, you know, have you decided, are you going to live off campus or are you going to stay on? This is something that, you know, you can always um, go uh, talk to the school if that should uh, end up changing later in the year. Now, um, we're going to start getting into parent um, income. And of course, you already have all of your documents because you listened to me at the beginning. Uh, and so now it's just going to start asking, uh, did you file a federal return for 2023? And um, what type of return? So it, it's systematically going to just walk you through everything step by step. Um, and, um, you know, maybe you didn't file a, a tax return. That's okay. It, there was a section for that. Um, maybe you file a Canadian tax return or, um, I'm going to be talking to somebody tomorrow that's in another country. And so there's, uh, we're going to check other non-U.S. tax return. It's all there walking you through step-by-step. Step. Now, um, if parents file separate tax returns. So remember, we're dealing with prior, prior tax return. So maybe in 23, um, you were not remarried, but in 2024, this year, you remarried. Now, your new spouse, you're going to have to include their information, their tax return, which is why you know both of you would have been filing, you know maybe married filing separate or head of household or, or such. You're both going to have to um, include your tax information, even if it's step parents that were not married and filing their taxes together in 2023. Same thing for the FAFSA as well. Um, now, this is the best part about the CSS that I really uh, enjoy, which is it tells you specifically line by line where, what line do you go to line 11 to get your AGI? Um, it asks you about, you know, on your 1040 schedule one, uh, go, you're just going to look for exactly what they're asking you to look for. Um, how much did I, uh, did the parent, we're in the parent section. So how much did, and it give your name. And um, if there's more than one parent, there's gonna be, it's gonna be, each is gonna have their own section. So let's just say this is parent number one. Um, and I have indicated there was no income. Now I should have had a zero here, but I was just you know taking a screenshot. Um, but if, let's just say, you have zero income um, and there were no um, contributions to 
uh, your retirement or your HSA or such. So what that is going to trigger is if you have an AGI less than $100,000, you will automatically qualify for a fee waiver uh, for the CSS profile. Because the profile is, is, not, uh, is not free. Uh, so um, it's $25 for the first school, and then um, each school after that is uh, $16. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, if you can, if your AGI is less than 100000 at least you're going to um, not have to pay those fees. Now, we're going to go back to, yes, I was earning income and, and such. So it's um, uh, now going to show you line by line, uh, you know, if it's got a required there, you're going to put whatever is in those particular lines. If there's no required, you don't have to put anything in there. I just like to put zeros if there's nothing there just so that I know I haven't missed anything. So, um, you know, it's gonna talk about other um, schedules and forms. So schedule one, two, three, uh, schedule C, it's just gonna tell you exactly what you need to go, where you need to go. Did you have a rollover um, of an IRA, a 401k to an IRA? You left one employer, and rolled over your IRA, or maybe you uh, left your employer, you retired and rolled it over into an IRA. You wanna make sure that if what showed up on line 4A or 5A, that you indicate that these are rollovers um, because you don't want that to be get added to your um, adjusted, uh, your AGI. Uh, because you didn't take that distribution, you just rolled it over. Um, you know, again, social security benefits, capital gain or loss, it, you're just going to um, copy exactly what is on your tax return on your 1040. Now, this is the one that most people do mess up. Um, they say, well, yeah, but line 24 says my federal tax is total paid. They just want what is on line 22. Um, do you have an HSA? Um, do not report the HSA deduction, which is on schedule one, line 13. Um, if you uh, have contributions to your retirement is telling you exactly where to go on your W-2, which boxes to look for, boxes 12A through 12D, and the codes D, E, F, G, H, or S. Now, um, you're sometimes you're going to see double A, double B, double D, or double E codes on your W-2. You do not include any of those because they're, those are typically your double D is going to be the health insurance that your employer provides. You don't want to add that you know $25,000 um, to your adjusted gross income. Uh, so just uh, again, just kind of watch what it what it's asking. Um, again, social security benefits that were, not reported on a tax return. Um, do you expect any changes in 2025 due to, you know, a job loss or a new job where you're going to have, you know, a, a big increase in income? Now, this is not for you to speculate. Well, you know, I'm in, I had this uh, comment a lot last year. Well, I'm in the IT field and it's really rocky right now. I could lose my job. And I said, have you been told that you're going to lose your job? No, but I could. Well, anybody could from any day, uh, you know, from one to another. So it's not speculate, it's not speculation. You have to know that you've 
gotten a new job, or lost your job, retired, whatever the case might be. So now parent benefits um, that are received um, for themselves or for their dependent family members in 23 or 24. Uh, so again, you know, if you had received, um, you know, food stamps or SNAP or the temporary assistance for needed families, needy families, um, definitely, you know, check mark each area, um, Medicaid or SSI. Now, the one that got a lot of people messed up last year with the FAFSA, especially, is the free or reduced um, lunch. So many schools were have continued offering those free lunches even after COVID um, had finished. If you know that your income does not qualify you to receive free lunches and breakfasts and or reduced lunches, do not check that even if your school is providing that. It's this question is only for those whose income is low enough that it qualifies them for that. Um, and, you know, it's gonna ask about the parents' occupation, where do they work, how many years have they worked there? Um, are they uh, employed by others, self-employed? So um, unemployed is, you know, maybe you lost your job. Now, retired or not employed by choice. Um, you know, you've decided, you know, you're going to stay home with the kids or possibly you um, are uh, unemployed, uh, receiving disability uh, due to an illness or an accident or such. You are not employed, um, uh, not employed by choice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, again, they're just going to ask, you know, are you currently serving or have been discharged? Yes or no. Um, I, again, you know, primary, I think I just uh, put a, another copy here, um, duplicate. Uh, what retirement plans does uh, parent number one or parent number two, you're each going to have your own set of questions. You could be, you could have an IRA. 401k, you could plan on drawing social security when you retire, and you could have an employer-sponsored plan. It doesn't have to be just one check mark. So check all the retirement um, programs that you participate in. Now, the current value of parent number one, also going to be parent number two, their tax deferred retirement, pension, annuities, and whatnot. This is individual per parent. So you're not going to combine mom and dad's accounts together. And this is just the balances. This is not including your um, contributions that you uh, made in the year because you saw that goes in another section. For those defined benefit plans, you need to typically contact uh, your uh, plan administrator if you're not receiving uh, regular uh, statements. Now, um, and also uh, uh, under, um, when it comes to those investment accounts too, in case I didn't mention it, uh, the 529s are considered a parent investment. So a 529 uh, prepaid tuition plan, that is a parent investment. You do not add that to uh, the student's accounts uh, because the student's assets are assessed much higher than a parent's. Louie, and while we're still on 529s, can you just confirm lots of questions about, um, is it the value for all 529 accounts that the parents have Honestly, all siblings? Profile, yes. Yes, right. Yeah, unfortunately. On the FAFSA, it's not anymore. Right. So they're, like I said, it's uh, super intrusive. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and if you have you know, money hiding under a, a rock or in a safe deposit box, you have to disclose you know, your, your cash on hand. Okay, so housing information. Does the parent and the student, are they living at the same permanent address? Um, it's, it's, you know, and if your student is away at college, this is, yes, they, they still live with you unless they are living with another parent in a different household. Um, which des <clears throat> describes your family's housing situation. You know, a lot of people are, are struggling. So some are living with others, with family or friends, and they're not paying rent. That means that they're living with others. They're not renting. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it's a, it's it's not a judgment of any case. They're, if they just need to get a really good picture. How badly does this family need help? Um, a lot of parents ask, well, how am I supposed to assess the market value if they don't want an assessment um, insured or the, uh, the tax value? And um, I always say, let's, you know, talk to a realtor or look to see what's selling, you know, close in your neighborhood and then look at it. If I had to sell it tomorrow, in a fire sale, how much lower would I have to ask for instead of, you know, we're all very house proud, we want to get as much as we can, do not um, put your market value as high as you hope it's going to sell for. Because a lot of these schools are going to uh, either assess your equity in your home um, at 100% or maybe one and a half times your income or hopefully not at all. Uh, so they're all different. You might forget, oh, geez, we bought our house like 25 years ago. I don't remember what the purchase price is. Again, you know, you, you try to find that, get gather up all that information ahead of time. Now, um, what is my monthly housing payment? You're just using the principal and interest only. You're not including escrow payments or association or condo fees or property taxes or anything of that nature. Um, and uh, if you are joint owners of a home with a parent or a sibling or such, you just use your, um, the the part that you own, not the full value. Don't overstate, you know, your the equity in your property. Um, so, how many are how many dependents do we have in our household? So, if you pay a more than half of the support of maybe an elderly parent or another family member, um, then you they are part of your household, and so you're going to, uh, they want to know, besides you and the student whose profile that we're completing, how many other dependents are in the household. And if you've got, you know, a big family with five kids, you're going to be filling out a lot of information. So it's going to go to another one of these, you know, oh, look at all those red lines. Um, it's just, they want to make sure you're just going to click that, tell us more, and then you're going to fill out the information and what the relationship is. Is it a sibling? Is it a, you know, a grandparent, you know, whatever. Um, but then they're going to start asking, um, and this is very intuitive. So they see that it's a sibling. Well, what year of, of, are they in school and where will they be, what year will they be uh, in the 25, 26 school year? Whether they're in high school or maybe you've got another student that's in college, uh, you know, it just depends. And um, if you've got someone that is at a university, what's the name of the school um, and what was the cost to attend? 
um, total costs, the uh, tuition, fees, books, supplies, housing, and meals. So um, they're going to take that into consideration when, you know, we, we lost that um, multiple student discount, in a sense, with the FAFSA. They don't take that into consideration. But a lot of the schools that use the CSS profile will take that into consideration when they're calculating their own institutional need. Now, um, if your dependent is not a college student, but they're in high school and you're paying private school tuition, they will ask for that information as well. But they're not asking, you know, how much do I pay for um, my kids to do travel teams and um, uniforms and, and all of that. It's just uh, um, for high school, it's just, you know, the cost of attending the school, not the all the extracurriculars. If your students have received some scholarships, grants, or gift aid to attend those schools, uh, they want to know, you know, how much are you receiving? Don't include work study and don't include loans. Don't overstate what you're receiving. Um, and, you know, uh, again, don't include loans or fees for extracurriculars. And if the parents are divorced or separated, and you're each paying half, remember, you're only including your portion, not the other parent's portion. They're going to be um, including that on their own non-custodial uh, uh, report. So again, this is about the dependent. So in this case, tell us about your sister's school for the upcoming year. Are they going to attend full-time or half-time? And what kind of college is it? So this is especially true if, let's say you've got twins. You're, and you're thinking, well, how am I supposed to know? We don't know what school that they're going to be going to because we haven't gotten acceptances or anything like that. You can, you can put a, a pretty good guesstimate in here and then explain that in the special circumstances. They'll see that, hey, these are twins. Um, we don't expect you to know exactly yet. Now, child support. There's a child support received section, which is total amount received for all children. And then there is a child support paid section, again, total amount paid in 23 and total amount paid in 2024. So, um, you know, don't get the two mixed up. Uh, I did one time for a client years ago when I first got started and I had to go in and luckily I caught it before we submitted. So parent expenses, everybody gets excited about this. Oh, good, I can finally tell them all about my expenses. It's only for if you've had pretty substantial medical dental expenses that is not covered by your insurance. Um, so typically rule of thumb, if it's more than 3% of your total income for either 23 or 24, then, um, then you will include say yes, just be sure that you have documentation. They will ask, and they may ask you just to provide a spreadsheet or they may ask for uh, specific documents. So if you don't have your documentation, then, and you're maybe around 3%, you might want to reconsider whether you're going to um, uh, include that or not. So um, what should or shouldn't I include for medical expenses? So you can include, you know, itemized that are showing up on your taxes, on your Schedule A, Line 1, the insurance premiums that you paid, but do not include anything that was reimbursed by F your FSA or HSA plans um, and do not include anything that was covered 
by your, um, your health or dental insurance. Now, parent assets. Uh, we, again, want to make sure, is this parent or student? Because there's going to be a student assets section as well. And so your current amount in cash, savings, checkings, they call it deposit accounts, like a high yield um, uh, account, or maybe a CD would be included here. And again, this is current. It is not from two years ago, or here's my, uh, my statement from last quarter, you want to get what your current balance is. Um, oftentimes I'm doing a CSS profile and a FAFSA you know, within the same week for a client and we use the same balances. But if it goes beyond that week um, where, and there have been substantial um, uh, deposits or debits, um, then we will go ahead and change those figures on the two forms that are separate, but always keep a, you know, a copy of what you put on each form. Current market value of investments. So 529 savings plans, like we discussed, prepaid tuition. Um, these are parent investments. You might have to call your, your plan administrator. What is the value of my prepaid tuition account? Um, stock options. Bonds and savings bonds, mutual funds, CDs, non-retirement annuities. If you've got precious metals, um, land contracts, do not include the value of your home, your business, farm, any real estate or retirement plans. You're not getting off scot-free though because those questions are asked separately. So if you do own real estate beyond your primary residence, um, whether it's land, vacation, second home, um, a rental that you're receiving um, income from, um, or it's just sitting empty and you're not receiving any rent, you're still going to include that information. Do you own a, um, a business? Uh, do you uh, live on a family farm? So if these are yeses, guess what? It's going to open up a question for information for each of these yeses. Um, so how many real estate properties do you have? Uh, tell us more. You're going to fill out the information. Again, market value. Same as you know, for your primary residence. Um don't include personal loans or consumer loans. You, of course, if you have a mortgage on the property, you're going to deduct that from um, whatever the market value is if you've got equity. Now, if you own a business, tell us more. Um, name of the business. Now, I get a lot of questions from this. So a lot of people like me, we're a solopreneur. I own my laptop, some monitors, you know, calculator and whatnot. I don't really have um, land and business um, properties and machinery and such. So I really, you know, my market value of my business is zero. Um, so just because it says, you know, your business, I can't sell my business. Um, so there is no market value. So don't overstate your business. Um, and if you are a co-owner with a family member that's not a spouse or uh, another partner or such, make sure that you're only providing your portion of the business and your portion of what you owe as well. Family farm. Again, tell us more and we want to know the name of the farm and um, you know the one thing that you do not include is the primary home if that is on the farm, but you do have uh, the assets of the farm, the machinery, the 
the livestock. I mean, uh, this is why it's it was so horrible when they're including this on the fast front now um, for those that live on a family farm and or a, uh, you know, a small family business under 100 employees, it's overstating unnecessarily, um, in, in my opinion. It's, it's very unfair, and especially farmers that are out in the Midwest. They might have a couple million dollars in equipment and land and whatnot, and they're paying themselves $40,000 a year. Um, how is that fair? But it's a different topic. <laughs> you definitely want to put a strong appeal in and um, uh, explain that in the special circumstances if that fits your situation for your family farm or for your business. Now, if you have finished all of those yeses, it's going to next section is the student income. If you didn't have any real estate or business or a farm, you're just gonna go straight into the student income. And remember, if your student is married, they're gonna be asking for their spouse's tax information as well. So did your student file a tax return for 2023? Oftentimes, if they're in high school, they didn't earn enough to file a tax return. So it's gonna be not filed or not required to file a tax return. But they did receive a W-2 or a 1099. You have no idea where it is. Um, and so what you're going to do right now is if you can't find it, contact their employers or employer from 2023 and ask for a copy. Um, you know, because the schools are going to ask for those documents. How much did they earn? Pretty simple. They're a student non-filer. Um, or if they're a student filer, they did file a tax return. That's what it's going to say here, student filer. What did they earn in 23? Take it off of their W-2 or their combination of their W-2 and 1099. Um, you know, everybody's different. Now, did they receive taxable earnings from their need-based taxable grants, scholarship aid? Uh, you know, it starts to get tricky when you're receiving um, uh, more institutional grants and aid than um, what you're uh, paying out of pocket. So oftentimes, if it gets beyond tuition, you're some of those um, that aid is is going to be taxed, but you're still probably paying a lot less in tax than if you had to pay that money out of pocket. So, um, and then untaxed social security benefits, uh, again, um, include the total amount of untaxed benefits received by you, the student. Even if you are mom or dad sitting here doing this, you're in the student section, so don't confuse student and parent. Student assets, again, you know, what do they have in checking savings? Don't say, oh, they probably have about $50. Ask them, what do they have in their accounts? They want accurate data. Um, do they have any investments? Do they have a trust? This gets a lot of people upset because Yes, my child has a trust because they were in an accident and it's they, they can't touch it until they're 25 or my grandparent left trust to all the great grandchildren. They can't touch it until they're 35. It doesn't matter. You have to include it. But again, you can explain it in the special circumstances um, section um, and some schools will take that into consideration and some will not. Uh, so uh, just be aware of that. Now, I've mentioned special circumstances quite a few times. It's my most favorite section of the CSS profile. It's the last section, go figure. Um, but if you have had substantial changes in 24 that 
definitely do not reflect what you're inputting with your 23 tax return, this is where you can make that explanation. Um, maybe you had a lot more um, medical expenses than 3% or you know, you're going through you know, a, a horrific time with cancer or whatever. This is where you can explain. If you are taking care of an elderly uh, family member, a parent or a grandparent, um, you know, you can explain. Again, make sure that you've got documentation. So if you see here, you've got a 2000 character limit. So this is not the time to, you know, write war and peace um, or to get so emotional that you're just, you're not getting to the point. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of like doing the, co the college uh, personal statement essay. There's a, there's a, a way to go about this that you have to kind of be very clear and concise and to the point, but also display that this is a this is quite a hardship for our family. Um, so <clears throat> it's um it's super important to get this right, just like the gentleman that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, you know, it it made a difference of seventy five hundred dollars a year. Uh, you know, that's another $30,000 that doesn't have to come out of their pocket. So just be really careful um, in this section. So uh, because you're, this is going to make a, a big difference for some of you if you've had uh, those types of circumstances in your household. Now, if you're you think you're at the end after the special circumstances, and I, it, I, because I did this uh, yesterday and didn't add a bunch of colleges on um, the list, sometimes you might go into a section where you're going to have individual colleges and they're going to ask um, individual questions. It doesn't happen all the time, but some are going to ask some more questions. A couple of times I've seen where they've asked, you know, um, you know, how many cars, uh, the make and model of your cars and such, which is just crazy. Um, but there's, you know, a few colleges that do that. But if you haven't, if you don't see that section um, or part of the, after you've done the special circumstances, then you can go back to your dashboard and just make sure that everything is complete. And if you see any sections that they're still showing white and it says incomplete, you just click on that continue section and you go in to find out, well, what did I miss? Um, but then when you feel that, you see that all of the sections are green. Every one of the 16 sections are green you're gonna go in and review your application. Do not miss this step. Do not get cocky and think, I know I got all the information correct because you might get a screen like this. It says warning. Now, the reason that this is showing is because if you remember in the example, I didn't have anything in the um, income, and or the also the um, uh, retirement contributions. Well, for the income, it said the parent taxes paid is greater than the parent adjusted gross income. So whatever it's saying here, you go into where it's highlighted, the hyperlink, and go in and check your data to see, did I make a mistake um, or not? Now, what is the most common one of this is, you um, you forgot to put any contributions that you made for the 2023 tax year for your retirement, your qualified retirement. Well, um, you know, I've been doing this many years and I'm finding a lot of people are not contributing to their 
retirement because they can't. Um, so it's going to come up that you you need to check this. You're going to go back into that screen and make sure that, you know, yeah, I meant to say zero, there's nothing there. And then it will know that you've at least checked it and it's correct information. So then um, you'll, when everything is complete, I can't show you the, the best part, you're gonna go in and pay <laughs> for each individual school. Uh, they're going to list out what the fee is. You'll pay the fee with your credit card and then you'll get to um, submit your CSS profile. Um, now, if you are completing this and you find, my gosh, this has taken me a lot longer than what I expected. I've got to go pick up, you know, my daughter from the bus stop or such. You can log out, log back in, and it'll you'll you'll see okay I can continue the application. Well, if you put your list of schools here, you'll have the schools their CSS code, but they're also going to show what their priority filing date is. So you want to make sure that you get this completed before their priority filing date, and the CSS profile takes on average about five business days to process. So give yourself that time to make sure that it's going to process by the priority filing date. Now, sometimes some schools, they'll overlook that, but there's some sticklers out there that will not. Don't get caught and don't try to do this at the last minute because you're going to see this um, warning, which showed up today. So yesterday I went in to create all of these slides and I went back in this morning and sure enough, I have a you know scheduled maintenance message that is going to be on October 3rd. What if that was the only day that I had in my schedule to complete this CSS profile and it was gonna be due that night. You want to make sure you give yourself enough time so that you don't run into this problem. So Debbie, that's the last slide. Uh, okay, Luann, very time efficient this year. Let me just ask a few questions. There are a ton yeah. of questions here, which um, you know I'm gonna apologize, we're not gonna be able to get to tonight. But let me just ask a few that came up um, over and over and um, um, and uh, we'll try and send that information about the other questions and set up another um, session that's just to answering questions. Um, about pensions, how do you actually estimate what the pension is valued at? Somebody in particular is saying that they work for the federal government and it can take months to get that information. Um, I completely uh, feel your pain. <laughs> so it's something that you need to, you know, you need to try to do ahead of time. Um, and you, you've got some kind of a guesstimate if you can't get an actual, um, you know, uh, you, you might know that, yes, I'm going to receive, you know, $53,000 um, a year. Uh, so, you know, times that by 10. And I think that that would be a, a pretty good uh, figure if you absolutely cannot get um, uh, a uh, answer from your plan administrator. Then there's been a few questions about timing, meaning um, can the profile be submitted before a student um, sends in their application? That's one timing question. And then the timing of um, submitting the profile close to the FAFSA, um, do they need to be? I mean, in this case, obviously, if a student is applying early, they can't be. But if they're applying, you know, in the regular, should they be waiting and doing this closer to um, the FAFSA opening date? So in normal times for years, 
um, for uh, my private clients, we do the FAFSA and the CSS profile pretty much, you know, in the same week, um, same, uh, sometimes the same day. But last year and this year are not normal times. The FAFSA isn't going to open until December 1st. Uh, the CSS profile is open now. If you have already submitted applications, you can submit the CSS profile, document, you know, it, what's nice about the profile is you can um, print out a copy of everything that you have input here. There's nothing hidden like it is with the FAFSA. So um, I highly encourage you to make a copy and keep it just in case you can't log in at the time because they're down for maintenance and you need that information. But if you're going to be filing your FAFSA two months from now, then you're going to use whatever the financial information is at that time. And as far as filing the CSS before you submit your college application, um, I don't see the reason for it. There's, it's, there's not going to be anything that's going to connect. I guess I'm thinking that the parent just wants to get it done and the student's not done with their common app yet. You can get it done. You don't have to submit it. Good point. Um, because quite honestly, a lot of kids, they fade out and all of a sudden they've done so many applications that there might be four or five applications that they're just They've run out of oomph and they're not going to submit them. Why pay the fees and send that CSS profile out? And it's just going to be sitting out there in, in limbo. It's not going to have anything to connect to it. And you've paid fees for nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, good point. Um, this is a little bit of a specific question, but somebody's saying that their um, AGI was is less than 100,000 this year, but it wasn't less in 2023. Um, can they still file for free, even though? No, you know, it's going to go by the 2023 um, uh, data. Okay. Um, oh, question about uh, parents either um, who have twins, um, just to confirm how many uh, for profiles do they have to fill out? That's one question. And another question about um, if a parent fill that information in a prior year, is there any way of kind of getting that information and, and kind of using that as the start for this year? So uh, what was the first question, the twins? Twins, how many accounts do they fill, have to fill, how many profiles? Well, the profile is belongs to the student, just like the FAFSA belongs to the student. So each student is going to have a profile and each student is going to have a FAFSA. And you can't copy one to the other. So my recommendation, because I've worked with many um, twins and triplets uh, over the years, you know, just uh, either have your monitor up with uh, the copy of the first profile off to the side so that you can just, you know, go back and forth. Um, uh, and uh, when you go back in to, uh, uh, do this again for the next year? No, it doesn't. It doesn't keep all the information. And kind of related to year over year, do parents have to fill out the FAFSA every year? Um, I'm sorry, the CSS profile. <laughs> CSS, it depends. So if you are receiving institutional aid from the school, absolutely. Um, but uh, let's say that in the first year you completed the FAFSA and the CSS, you didn't receive any institutional aid. Um, it doesn't make, uh, didn't make any difference for um, uh, uh, merit scholarships. So there wouldn't be any reason to continue to do the CSS profile. And um, yeah, I guess related to that, um, if somebody's asking, if the CSS profile is required, um, is it required if you're not trying to get need-based aid? Like if you're just hoping to get merit scholarships. Right. So it depends on the school. 
Um, some schools want the CSS and the FAFSA, even if they're you know just going to give their merit awards. Um, but I'm going to tell you, uh, I talked to a lot of people over the years. Well, um, why should I file? I'm not going to get any, I don't qualify for any institutional aid. Uh, you never know what's going to change. And I've um, had numerous people over the years that didn't file uh, CSS or the FAFSA and you know, came to me afterwards, well, how come my neighbor or, you know, sister or brother got aid and they made more money than I do um, because they didn't file the CSS and or the FAFSA. So if you, uh, you don't have to file it, if you don't file it, you're pretty much assured that you'll probably pay full, you know, full freight, um, unless it's a school that doesn't even uh, require anything to give merit, if there's automatic merit somewhere. Um, this is um, a good question that I'm sure a lot of people are thinking. Does the CSS take into account that a parent might have savings um, that need to cover more than the student who is applying to go to college? So meaning, you know, there are younger siblings, uh, you know, coming. Um... Well, they're, <clears throat> they're asking how many dependents, how many siblings are there? That's why they're asking, you know, what grade are they in so that they can see, well, when are they going to be going to college? Are they in college right now? Is it going to be another year? Is it going to be five years from now? So they do take that into consideration, but they don't explain it to you. And it's school by school. Some are more generous than others. And maybe you could talk a little bit about um, kind of this situation because that was a big change in the FAFSA calculation that they took out the fact that um, there was that they considered whether there was another student in college at the same time. What have you seen that um, the colleges that require the CSS profile, how would they are they still taking that into account? How does somebody know? Um you would just flat out ask them for one. Um, so when all of this was starting, I had my family's uh, students send an email to financial aid, uh, you know, asking, uh, are you going to take into consideration uh, that we will still have more than one student? And this is especially, you know, for twins or triplets or such. Uh, and um, uh, we got answers so that we had it in writing that, yes, we will continue to honor that as long as, you know, income and assets are still staying the same and you're you know, going to receive, you know, a similar amount of the institutional aid. There were some schools that said, no, we are going to follow the FAFSA and, you um, you know, so it's a school by school situation. The majority of private schools I found um, did take it into consideration as long as there were a student was already in school at the time where there were two students that were already in school at the time when this made when this change was made. Um, not so much for the state schools because they don't have the same kind of funding as um, the private schools do. But some private schools, uh, I, I, they will remain nameless, but one is in New York City, um, <laughs> didn't take it into consideration at all. So, uh, but yet the, the other school that the sibling was at did take it into consideration. So it's a school by school basis. Okay, well, Thank you, as always, Luann. Um, uh, I will just honestly put in a little bit of a plug. Um, we do offer what we call CSS profile reviews. Um, and uh, I'm just kind of had the same for me because I want you to tell Luann. So well, the way it works is um, people fill out the CSS profile. 
They save it before they submit it. They send some doc the documentation to Luann and Luann looks it over. What I was gonna have Luann say is, have you ever looked it over and not found something? Only once. Once, I thought I was gonna say once, yeah. <laughs> One parent uh, about four years ago, um, every other one, and we've done quite a few between, you know, road to college and then of course my own private clients. Um, uh, there's always going to be something that needs to be changed. It changes every year as well. So it's just like anything, you know, it's, you're not in this every day in and out like I am. So, uh, and keeping up with the changes and, and what's going on and such. So, um, so but it's yeah. not to pressure and, you that you need to do this service, but it's just there, there's some families that, you know, are particularly nervous. They're just not comfortable filling out these forms. They just want a second set of eyes. It's honestly pretty reasonably priced. So and, and you know, if that's something you're interested in, we'll be sending information about it. But just to know that that's available. Was the, you know, the biggest thing with most um, most parents that did this. I'm sorry, uh, say it again, Luann. They, that they just had the peace of mind to know right. that everything, you know, was submitted correctly. Because it's stressful. <laughs> no. It's stressful just listening to it tonight. <laughs> and yeah. as one person wrote, which, you know, kind of have to somewhat agree with, it feels like this is a scam. I wouldn't call it a scam, but it's very intrusive. Yeah, it's um no, I mean I I've had more families that have received institutional aid um that they never would have if they didn't complete the CSS. So um I when I first started, I hated this form. I thought it was just so intrusive and horrible, and it's still intrusive, but um it's it's there to uh you know help you find some additional um resources to pay uh and so they you know they're they're not all out to just say oh geez we're gonna we're really gonna put the you know the screws to them um and get as much as we can uh you know there's there's a, a reason for this and it does benefit uh, most families one last a good question is there was also some um questions in the chat about um, how do how do colleges or do colleges use this information as part of their admissions decision, not just their aid decision? Sure, it does. It's part of that enrollment management in the the behind the scenes that you know is all kept very secretive and smoke and mirrors and and whatnot. But uh, you know, it, it's it's very beneficial for the colleges to make sure that students are gonna be staying there. Um, so if they're getting down to numbers of admissions and they're looking at, well, we've, we've really kind of given out as much aid as we can. Um, and we have some students here that don't need as much aid or uh, looks like they'll be able to um, afford to keep them there. I mean, sure, that's going to come into you know, some decisions, unless a school is completely uh, need blind. And they state that um, in their, on their websites. And is there a way to get a PDF of all the questions ahead of time of the, C of the profile? No, never has been. I know. Uh, you know, which is annoying. Uh, or you could spend, you know, the six hours that I did yesterday um, creating a fake account. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is the day of the year that I I, I love to hate um, just getting prepared for this. But it's so it's so worthwhile. Um, it's my my gift to everyone. So. Okay, well, thank you again, Luann. Thank you everybody for showing up. Rush and go see the um, debate if that's um, on your agenda for tonight. And um, it's the beginning of October. You still have time. We are here to answer questions and we'll probably have another session just on questions. But I think 
one of the most valuable pieces of advice, Luann, that you gave tonight is don't wait to the last minute. Don't even wait. I mean, give yourself a whole week to get this done ahead of time, just for the time that it takes to process. Yeah, I mean, look at all the look at all the problems that uh, we had last year. Uh, you know, it's just learn from that and uh, don't rush it, uh, but also don't don't be you know blase about it either. Make sure you know what the deadlines are so that you're not leaving any money on the table because you know college is expensive uh, and it just keeps getting more and more expensive every year. Okay, everyone. Good All night. Right, Thank you, Luann. Okay, good luck, everyone. Take care. Take care. Bye.